Hey guys and welcome to Experience the Hunt 365. This is a YouTube channel that I'm starting. I'm going to be recording my hunts this year and some, some of the experiences surrounding hunting, things like conservation, different things like this. But I just wanted to make this video to sort of give you the purpose of this channel, what my goals are. And so I just wanted to make this introduction video and also share a little tip at the end of this. But uh, the purpose of this channel is, of course, hunting, the experience of the hunt, thus the name Experience of the Hunt 365. But I don't want to just show, you know, the killing part of it or, you know, big bucks, big turkeys. You know, that stuff's entertaining, it's fun to us as hunters, but it's not all that there is. For me, you know, the experience of hunting is a lot of the reason why I do it, not just the killing the big animal, right? And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. When you look back on a hunt that you had, it's the experience that sticks out. Like I had a hunt in Montana about four or five years ago, and I just remember the scenery, you know, the animals, watching them, the friends and family that I was with. Those things are the things that stick out to me more than the actual success that I experienced out there. I've also had some failures. Those failures stick out more than the success I had. And so for me, it's more about the experience and then also the food. Um, the food is a big part of why I hunt and I want to get to where most of the meat I eat is game food only, uh, game meat. But I'm not there yet, but that's where I hope to be eventually. So, uh, you know, the purpose of this video is to show those experiences, not just you know, big bucks and all this. Um, it's also to show some of the work and thought that goes into what we as hunters do, especially when you try to practice conservation and do things on properties to help the wildlife, to help the deer population. You know, there's a lot of thought and care that goes into caring for these animals, trying to help them, help their surroundings, help the ecosystem. Not just the animals that you're hunting, but other animals benefit too, the birds, Butterflies, bees, things like this can benefit from conservation practices. And so I want to show some of the thought and work that goes into that. You know, some of the habitat work to surrounding deer hunting. That's really the main thing that I enjoy hunting is deer. Um, but show, you know, like I said, the work that goes into it. Um, also, another purpose of this is hopefully to convince maybe someone who's never been hunting but's been on the fence to finally try it. You know, go out there and try hunting. Um, I think you will enjoy it. Like I said, you'll be more connected to your food. You know, a lot of people that argue against hunting, I really don't see how they have an argument if they're eating meat, right? You know, you're eating animals that were killed so that you could have that food, that meat. Just because I choose to go and kill that animal doesn't make me any worse than you, right? The animals are dying regardless of whether or not you killed it or someone killed it for you. To me, it's a greater responsibility to choose to go out there and harvest it, put in the work to find it, kill it, butcher it, and then cook it. You know, you, you're connected to that food when you do all these things. And so, you know, I would encourage you, you know, to go out there and experience for yourself. Take that responsibility of killing the animal yourself, not letting someone else do it for you. And then also, you know, you have the arguments of from people that don't eat meat, you know, what would I say to these people is your existence here on earth still causes animals to die and suffer. You're living in a house, no doubt, and so that house is taking up habitat that could be used for wildlife, right? Whether that's deer or bugs, rodents, you know, you're affecting an animal just by having your existence here. Also, you know, you may be eating vegetables and not eating meat, but farmers kill animals all year round with their bush hogs and their combines. You know, I've seen pictures of hens, turkey hens, being killed from bush hogs and combines because they were sitting on their nest trying to protect it, where they had a nest in a hay field or something like that. And when the farmer comes to bush hog it, he doesn't know the hen's there, right, and he runs over. Same thing with phones. Uh, deer phones die every year from bush hogs and combines. Um, a lot of animals do actually. Um, also you think about soy protein. A lot of vegans eat soy protein. 
and soybeans is a major food source for deer. And so farmers go and get permits to kill deer eating their soybeans because if they don't, they'll eat up all the soybeans, right? And then another important thing about hunting is keeping the population down. Um, you think about some of the cities, I've heard stories where you can look through the woods and look at people's houses and basically all the vegetation from about five, six foot down, you know, a deer's head level down is just eaten up because the deer population is so great that they eat everything they can get to. And I've seen this in some of the city, city areas I used to do landscaping. You would see a holly tree where the bottom half of it looked like it had been trimmed. And the top half was just growing out uh, wild. And the reason it looked like that was because the deer had eaten what they could of the holly. Um, so from their head height down, it was you know, basically bare. So, you know, it was an important thing of keeping the population down because they eat all that browse. If the population is so thick, it's unhealthy for the deer herd because there's not enough food to keep the herd healthy. So you want to keep the herd at a minimum. Um, so hunting helps in doing that, right? That's that conservation side of it. So this is another purpose, you know, just to talk about some of these topics, maybe get you to go out there and experience the hunt for yourself. Um, like I said, be connected to your food. It's, to me, that's a big part of why I hunt. So these are just some of the, some of the goals I have for this, uh, this video. You know, again, also it's to, just to share my story, my experiences. You know, I enjoy being able to go back, go back and watch them and relive them. And hopefully you, you will be able to enjoy, enjoy that too. So that's, that's the purpose of, of this channel. And I hope you'll follow along with me this fall as I try to record my deer hunting season, my fall hunting season. And then the tip that I want to share with y'all is um, I'm a resident of North Carolina and it's important to keep up with the laws. Um, there was a rule passed earlier this year concerning using deer urine as a ward. Uh, actually, it was cervid excretions, which involves more than deer, but specifically here, it'd be deer urine being used for lords. I've used it in the past. Um, there was a rule, rule uh, passed earlier this year that you could not do that. Now, there was 10 letters of objections sent to the Rules Commission, so they reviewed it. So there's going to have to be legislation for this in January of 2021. So currently there are no laws against using urine as a deer lure or an animal attractant. But the purpose of this is related to CWD. Um, the prions are found in deer urine, the prions from CWD, and when you're spraying that in the air or putting it on a scent wick and it's floating through the air, it can get in the deer's nostrils and into the deer that way and they can get infected with the CWD. So that's the purpose of this law, is to try to keep CWD from coming to the state of North Carolina. And so with that being said, CWD has not been found in any of the deer native to North Carolina. So it is not illegal if you kill a deer here and you cut out the bladder and want to use that as an attractant, that's not illegal. What's illegal is, um, or what the rule was about, was urine from a farmed cervid farm deer so you couldn't go in and like buy urine from farm deer but if it was native here to North Carolina a wild deer you could use that urine and like I said this isn't a law um, it was a rule passed but because of the 10 layers of objection uh, it's going to be under legislation in January um, but I'll just keep an eye on that it said it could be updated you just need to go to ncwildlife.org to to look at that and find out the latest information on that so my tip of the day is like I said stay up on the laws um, it's important to know know the laws of your state and to be sure you're following them. So that's the tip of the day. I hope you will uh, follow along. You can follow me on Instagram at Experience the Hunt 365. Uh, I've been sharing stories throughout the weeks, showing what I've been doing leading up to the season. I hope to drop a video uh, showing some of my prep for this upcoming season. And so yeah, I hope you follow along, and we'll see you later.